Before we head into that lab, I did want to show you the split horizon deal uh, on the live equipment. I actually just walked through it myself. And let's go through it at the very top up here. We have our adjacencies. At this point, you can see router one was getting that loop back from router two with no problem at all. Then I went down to router three, ran show IP route EIGRP, and there's nothing to show. So we know what that means. Router three is not getting that route. So what I did then was go up to serial zero on router one, and I disabled split horizon with a no IP split horizon EIGRP 100 command. Don't worry, I'll show that to you again later. You may also want to come back through this section after you watch the EIGRP section at least once. Then something a lot of books and such leave out that you need to know about when you enable split horizon and EIGRP you should expect to have your adjacencies go down it actually says and this is one long message split horizon changed so that means your adjacencies are actually going to go down they come back up hopefully if nothing else changes but once our neighbor adjacencies came back up and let's get to that point here we are router one show IP EIGRP neighbor you can see that it had its adjacencies back to routers two and three. Took a few seconds for the route to show up back up on R1, but here it is. And it's the network there, 2220. And then down on R3, R3 did have the route. So again, this is one way around that rule of split around the rule of split horizon. Of course, it's just disabling it. But in so many production environments and some complex lab ones, when you do that, what you tend to get is uh, routes being advertised or loops forming uh, that would not have without Split Horizon. It's hard to spot that thing in advance until you actually turn it off, uh, but it can happen. So again, a better solution is sub-interfaces, and with no further ado, let's head to that lab now. See you there.